number 51. Jeremy Clements currently ninth in the standings in the Xfinity Series. And Larry Mack, you found out that Jeremy is still very much writing this success story. Well, what I also found out, that driver that's ninth in points, their shop is about as big as a small auto repair center with four full-time employees. So out of curiosity, I made a trip down to Spartanburg, South Carolina. This shop was built in the early 70s. We've raced here since I was a little kid, and then they raced here when my grandfather was here with Buck Baker and A.J. Foy, so many pioneers of the sport, so I'm proud of it. When you talk about unsung heroes, the 51 of Jeremy Clements, he's working for night. That's outstanding. Such a good family. Been in this sport a long time. I spent a lot of money down there. The old Clements boys that race shots by late model engines always bringing the heat. This is the side that makes money versus JCR and NASCAR that spends the money. So <laughs> I love that. This, uh, this side of the shop, you know, I'm very proud of, the, of my, my father, Tony Clements, and my uncle, Glenn Clements. They work literally day and night, and they crank out roughly 250 or so dirt engines a year. But the only NASCAR engines that's built is for your Xfinity Series car, right? That is correct. Okay. Yeah. How many full-time employees do you have? We have four total, and that's it. Four? Yeah. That's like it. one, two, three, four? Yes, sir. That is it. This is the best start Jeremy Clemens has ever had to a season. What What, what has changed? Well, usually JCR wasn't able to, to carry a crew chief over the off season, So I made the decision, like, look, look to, to make us be better, we need a crew chief in this here. This is where races are won, right in here. Exactly, Larry. You know. So we, we made a decision. We need them in here full time every day. We never had that. And I really think that's helped us because, you know, we have no sim here. We have no engineering. And, you know, we try to figure it out ourselves. July 2004, 311 Speedway. Walk us through what happened that day. Yeah, that's one of those days that you didn't see coming. The drive shaft decided to, to just break and a piece of it come in the car and just about took my hand and arm off and uh, took uh, eight hours of surgery the first time and 10 surgeries all together to reconstruct it. They sewed my hand to my hip for a month. They did. They got tendons from my foot, bone graft from my hip. A lot of things went back into this, this hand to make it work again. The doctors, they were a little negative to me about like, we don't think you'll ever race again. And I'm just like, oh, you're wrong. There's no way. Just make it where I can grip a wheel and a, and a shifter and I'll prove you wrong. You became the first independent driver and independent team to win an Xfinity Series race in over 10 years when you oh, did wow. that. So I can tell it's very special to you, but what about to your dad, Tony? What what about to your family? Yeah, it was very special to him too. I don't know if he believed it or not either when it <laughs> happened. I remember seeing Victory Lane, he gave me a big hug, and uh, it was a special day nonetheless. And if we just keep putting ourselves in position like we've been doing, we're gonna again, I feel like. Larry Mack, I will say, I think you stumped him a little bit there with your McNugget. He did not know that. I think that's awesome. It, it, it is. He's 36 years old, and he's been driving for this family-owned team for roughly 11 years. But he told me, Larry, if I got a call today from Joe Gibbs or Roger Penske or Richard Childers or Dale Earnhardt Jr., I would leave and go drive for that team in a heartbeat. He said, I wouldn't shut my team down. I would give another young driver an opportunity, but he said, I would take it in a heartbeat. Yeah, and I listened to Clint Boyer talk about that early. He bought a lot of dirt engines, and so did I. I've been to their race shop like you went to, and I had to drop off an engine and pick one up, and impressed with to see the engine shop in the back and how small the front race shop yeah. is. You know, I, I think what Jeremy's doing is awesome. I mean, it kind of reminds me of going back in my racing 20 years ago in the, in the Xfinity Series. And, you know, I, I, I admire him because he's competing against these big teams and doing really, really well. And he has no DNFs this year. And I think yeah, about I think about that because when I look at that piece, I say, you know what? He can't afford to have DNFs. He can't break uh, parts. He can't break pieces. He can't get in crashes to get to the next race. So obviously that's a big thing. And I don't think he's ever been in the, the simulator either. I heard that. So oh my that's, that's impressive right there.